The mysteries of nature are as infinite as they are fascinating. Thousands of books have been written in an effort to explain these mysteries. And the man who can best explain them is, of course, our friend with the encyclopedic mind, Mr. John Kieran. Right now, Mr. Kieran is in his library with Paul Milford, his next door neighbor. Let's listen. John, I was invited to go fishing for pike. Somehow or other, I've always thought it's rather unfair to go after anything smaller than a marlin. Have you got any ideas on the subject? Well, Paul, all I know is that we aren't nearly as cruel to fish as fish are to fish. And we don't catch nearly as many fish as fish do. Well, I've never looked at it that way, John. As a matter of fact, that very wise old gentleman, Benjamin Franklin, he turned vegetarian for a while until he finally decided that if fish could eat fish, he could eat fish, too. Well, I'm not one to disagree with Ben Franklin. Life underwater is a pretty savage affair, Paul. In fact, I think you might call it a fish-eat-fish -fish existence. But you can also call this the most thrilling fish story you ever encountered. This is the story of the fish we call the pike, P-I-K-E. And we start in the springtime. These are the spring floods covering the landscape. We begin with a full-grown pike. In the spring, as Tennyson said, a livelier iris comes upon the burnished dove. In the spring, a young man's fancy lately turns to thoughts of love. Well, the fish are in on that, too. The pike, which ordinarily goes around all by itself, hunting for food, is moved by the spirit of spring and starts in to think of family matters. And they gather together and head for the spawning beds just as the salmon run up the Columbia River to spawn by the hundreds of thousands. Now here are the males and females scouting around for a good place for the uh, eggs to hatch. Now they're giving the uh, spawning bed a going over, so to speak. Now here are the eggs being dropped by the female. Those eggs are called roe, R-O-E, and fish eggs are what you eat when you eat shad roe. And caviar, too. Caviar is the roe or egg of the sturgeon. Of course, another difference is that the caviar costs a lot more. Now it seems that there are more than human beings that are fond of roe, because here you see the smaller fish of another species dining on the roe of the pike. That's the first hazard that the pikes have in their life cycle. Now this is the male depositing the milt, M-I-L-T. That's the male element, the spermatozoa, that sinks down through the water and fertilizes the egg. Here are some fertilized eggs, and they're already growing by fission and cleavage. Now, these pictures, of course, are very much magnified. That's the young pike inside the egg. And Grandma, what big eyes it has. Now, here are the young pike just out of the egg. And as a matter of fact, they're carrying part of the egg with them, that swollen part there. That's the yolk sac, and that's the first food of the young pike. There you can see it's beginning to breed. Well, you can see spring has come along, the foliage is out now, and the young fish are growing a little bit and scouting around more freely for all the different kind of food on which they live and which they find in the water. All water is filled with uh, myriad forms of animal uh, and vegetable life, and uh, practically anything that comes to a fish's mouth is food. They will eat anything, including each other. Those are uh, fleas, water fleas of some kind that you see dashing around. And of course, all this time, those young fish are eating and running the risk of being eaten. That's the way it is underwater. 
Eat while you can because there's always a chance that you will be eaten yourself. It's really a rough life, although it looks quiet enough. It's later in the season now, and you can see that fish has grown. And he has a bad eye, a wicked eye. Of course, a pike is a, a game fish, a, a predator. It, uh, it's really dangerous to others that are any smaller than it is. Well, there's a chap that just grabbed himself a good full meal. Now you can see the reason why other fishes rather hesitate to come near the pike. Look at that dental equipment. That'd make a good back scratcher. Now here's a big pike looking around for what he might devour. And he might devour anything a little smaller than he is himself. There's one has a victim ready for the oven. He really has a mouthful. This is a very much magnified picture of the head of the nymph of a dragonfly, the form that lives underwater and later climbs above water and develops the wings that we see when it flies around. Now here are two of these dragonfly nymphs have grabbed a fish and they're feeding on it. Of course, they themselves may become food for some larger fish. It's late in the season now, the fall has arrived, and the fish is pretty well grown. Still has that mean look. In fact, it's getting meaner all the time. He didn't seem hungry at first, but I think he's uh, working up an appetite. Uh-oh, here comes a heron, a bird that likes a tasty dish of fish. And the heron has a fish. There's one less pike in that pond. Well, there's a pike with a lean and hungry look like Jan Cassius. And that other fish takes a hint and moves on. Now here's a big pike looking hungrily at a smaller pike. They eat one another. There's another little family quarrel, but that one escaped, but the pike has caught another type of fish. This time I think he has Bitten off more than he can chew. Here comes a crayfish. Now, ordinarily, a crayfish wouldn't want to do any business with a pike of that size, but this pike has a bad case of indigestion at the moment, and Dr. Crayfish is coming along to relieve him by eating some of that food. That's a stickleback, not a handsome fish. Here's another pike looking for a meal, and that's a poor perch, an inoffensive perch, and now it's a meal for the pike. Life can be cruel underwater. Now that fish has a bad eye, no question about it. 
I don't think it's a good-natured fish. And it sees something, a worm, a worm on a hook. And the pike falls for it. Well, that's the finish of one pike. But there are always more fish in the water than ever came out of it. And the life cycle of the pike goes on forever.